Hello, everyone. I would also like to welcome you to our Field Extender Enterprise webinar. Today, we will talk about Field Extender Enterprise 2020F, which allows adding additional fields on any Sage 300 screen. You can add various types of additional fields, such as string and number. However, I would like to draw your attention to two types, rich text, which allows you to enter unlimited and formatted text, and electronic attachments, which allow attaching soft copy of any document to Sage 300 transactions and master data. Now, let's see this on an example. So, when I open the inventory control, I see item screen. You can see field extender, optional fields, values pop up next to it. When I am selecting an item, you can see that some additional data is available for this particular item. In this company, I have implemented that these five fields are added to the inventory control item. And you can see here an image. You can also see rich text, which is, as I mentioned, uh, formatted text. And you can see other data. Now, about the attachments, basically, you can have two types of attachments in field extender. You can have electronic attachments, for example, this image here. Or you can have hyperlink. But electronic attachments, these uh, attachments themselves are saved in the database. With hyperlinks, you are saving the attachment somewhere on a shared directory, like on the server, and only the link is saved in the database. But when you click on the link, it is opening the attachment. So this is basically what you can do with Field Extender. Now let's go one step further. So I have also uh, implemented this um, Field Extender for order entry. And I have implemented it in a way that for the detail line, the data from my IC item flows to order entry transaction. So I will just start creating an order entry here. I will select my item. Okay, let me just add a quantity here also. And you can see that the data just came from the inventory control to here. It flowed here. If I want something to be changed, I can just change the expired date, for example, here to 2021. Save this and post my transaction. Another thing which I want to tell you is that what you see here it can be printed, the images and the special instruction or the rich text can be printed on reports. So I'm just going to show, ship this item. And I have already customized invoice form, so I will print it. And okay, it takes a moment to print. Okay, now it's printed. So you can see the image and the special instructions are printed on the invoice. This is the standard sample from Sage 300, which is customized to print the image and special instructions. This now gives you a basic idea what Field Extender Enterprise can do. Now, what I want to talk about is how do you implement Field Extender Enterprise, but on a very, very high level? Uh, field Extender Enterprise, uh, the, when you are implementing Field Extender Enterprise, you have to decide two things. One is on which screens you want uh, the pop-up to appear, and what fields do you want to appear on the pop-up? Now, what I will be doing, I will be implementing this for pure invoices. When I'm saying implementing, it's actually incorrect because I should say I will enable it. Uh, Field Extender Enterprise is coming with 26 screens already pre-configured. So you just need to enable them. Let me show you how. I'm going to screen configuration, finding my PO invoice screen. Now I can just open the finder, search on the finder what is the screen name invoice and select here my PO invoice entry. Or if I know the screen ID, I can just type the screen ID here. How do I know the screen ID if I need it? Just select here to view the list. And what you see here is your screen ID. So if I go to purchase order, 
this is my screen ID. Okay. So I have now the configuration for pure invoice entry open. Uh, I need to remove this inactive, so I will need to make it active. And I will talk about another feature, which uh, is the default setup. So I want the application to automatically set up field um, pure invoice entry for me. For that, I will go to default setup and say um, set up the default values for the PO invoice header, so for the entire invoice, and for PO invoice details, so for each item I am selecting on the invoice, and click Save. Now the application will instruct me to come out of the Sage, fun, Sage 300. Let's just follow the instructions. Okay, I will exit Sage 300. Okay, I will log in back to Sage 300. and go to PO Invoice Entry. Okay, now you can see that automatically the pop-up appears next to my PO Invoice Entry. And if you look further, you will see there are two tabs on the pop-up, PO Invoice Entry header and PO invoice entry detail. One is for the entire invoice, the other one is for detail lines. Uh, when the application is doing the default setup, it is creating different fields and assigning the seven of them, it is assigning to your transaction. Now I can see that I have attachment, date, money, number, rich text, text, and yes, no. This is workable, but not so user friendly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fine tune this implementation, this default setup. I will just go to field extender setup, go to assign fields, find a transaction I want to work with, and make the changes I want. For example, for the first attachment, I want it not to be called attachment one, but to be called vendor invoice. And I don't want any other type of the fields here. I'm just going to delete the rest. OK. And what I want to do, I want to have the second attachment field. Actually, when a field extender does the default setup, it creates four fields from each type. So I will just add the second type of the field here. And you can see, for example, I have four attachment types here and for date, and for money, and so on. So I will just select the second attachment, and I will call it user manual. Save this. And go back to my PO invoice. And you can see that now it's giving me better naming. So it's just as user manual and vendor invoice. So the end user will know what field is for what. Now let's talk a little bit about licensing of field extender. With field extender, set, you will have two types of licensing. One is an enterprise license. With enterprise license, you will get access to the 26 pre-configured screens, plus you will be able to configure your own screens. So on the screen configuration, you can just pick up a screen which is not pre-configured and add the details for you. I'm not gonna describe now how to pre-configure your screen. All this information is available in the user guide. So this is what you can do with Field Extender Enterprise. Uh, the next option is a single screen. So if you don't want all this, you can just purchase a single screen license and you will be able to see, to add fields to a particular screen for which you have purchased the license. Okay, so this is about the licensing mechanics. Now, uh, Field Extender 2020F is actually a major release and there are a few changes on it. So I want to emphasize a uh, few of them. 
as you remember, or those of you who are familiar with Field Extender, know that it exists in Pro and Light edition. Well, with 2020 Field Extender Enterprise, these editions are removed. Uh, Pro edition previously, you could use it to customize almost any Sage 300 screen, which is using as OCX, and Light edition served as a platform for document attachment applets. Now, document attachment applets are added as a feature in Field Extender itself. And Field Extender is available with two licensing mechanisms, as you, as you saw, with enterprise license and like as a document attachment applet with a single screen licensing. Another feature which is added in 2020 are web screens for the pre-configured screens. So I will just open the web screens. Oh, sorry. Okay, while this is opening, it's going to take time to open those 300 web screens. I'll just tell you a few more features about Field Extender. For example, with Field Extender, you can have different field sets. And you can, when you are defining the fields, you can assign different fields to different field sets. In that case, uh, when, for imagine the situation where you have two types of items, manufactured item and uh, items that you are purchasing, and you want to keep two different sets of fields, one for manufactured item and the one for purchased item. Field Extender allows you to do this. Another feature which I want to talk about is optional tables. A field Extender allows you to have optional tables so you can validate the data which the user can enter. Now let's just log into our web screens and we will see how the attachments are uh, viewed there. I'm just going to open again the IC item. Okay, select my item. And here there is no pop-up automatically, but there is the attachments button. So I just need to click the attachments button. Now I will see the pop-up with the five fields I have defined. And if I want to view the attachments, I can just come here and click open. Depending, it will ask whether to download or to save because this is actually downloading and it will show you the attachment. And one more major feature which is added in Field Extender 2020 is inquiries. Uh, basically, optional field inquiry allows you to select records based on Field Extender data. For example, uh, I can say that I want to see all I see items for which the expiry um, the expiry date is 2020. It's before 2020, 2022. I'll just click go and the application will bring my item. Uh, furthermore, I can select here to include blank records. In this case, the items for which there is no field extender record at all will again be shown in the list. So this is Basically, what I wanted to tell you about Field Extender, its major features, major new features, and how to quickly implement it with the defaults.